So let's talk about the importance of the grip. If you've watched instructional videos and read books and so on, they talk about the two V's and how many knuckles you can see, should you interlock, should you overlap. Well, the reality is there is no perfect grip for everybody. A definition of a perfect grip is one that really allows you to square that club face at speed to give you that distance and accuracy we talked about earlier. So, what you need to appreciate is there may be subtle differences in the grip. If you slice the golf ball, you might need a slightly different grip than if you hook the golf ball. The beauty of the grip par glove, it allows you to make those subtle adjustments to your grip so you can present the club face to the ball correctly, achieving the shots that you want to see. So I'm going to show you how to get the very best out of this product. So now I'm going to talk to you in a little bit more detail about the grip. And what I've done, I've actually marked this glove up just to help illustrate the key points that you need to understand if you're going to get the best out of this product. When we form our grip, ideally, you need the club to run diagonally across your hands. So we're not going to get too much in the fingers, not too much in the palm. It's running across from this crease here on the pad to the first knuckle of the index finger, roughly parallel to your thumb. Then I'm going to fold my hands round. Now what's important when I fold my hands round, the books and videos often talk about the two V's. And people are confused about those. So what I've done here, I've drawn a little upturned V on the top of my thumb and this crease here. And this would point up to my right ear, right shoulder for a right-handed golfer. That allows us to see the inclination of the left hand. If we turn the left hand a long way round, that's what's known as a strong grip. It doesn't mean you're holding it stronger, that's just the terminology for the detail of that position. And if we turned it the other way, this is known as a weak grip. And this is when players and books talk about how many knuckles you can see. I've also marked this glove up here with just three dots on my knuckles. If I had my grip very straight here, you may only be able to see one dot. If I put it stronger, turn to the right, you may see three knuckles here, or three dots. Ideally, for a normal neutral grip, is about two and a half knuckles, that's what we'd say. But remember, as I mentioned earlier, there is no exact grip that's right for everybody. The best one is that consistently squares that club face. The beauty of the grip par glove is it really gives you the flexibility and also the golf coach the flexibility to form the grip that's ideal for you. Once you've positioned your hands correctly for your desired shot pattern, then you can just simply fold the strap over. The nature of the design of the strap keeps the index finger and the thumb free so we can position those correctly but it also gives us the flexibility that we need in a good grip. Many other training aids force you into their interpretation of the correct grip which is truly not right for everybody so they're too fixed, they're not flexible enough. There's a human on the end of this golf club and we've got to get the right grip for them. So this grip really allows us to do that without impeding the movement. You can practice in it and then play in it and train your hands to form that correct grip every time. So you're getting a little bit more understanding of the importance of the correct grip. Now what I want to show you is the orientation of this hand. Remember we've talked about how much you can rotate it round. Let's assume we've got that showing about two, two and a half knuckles. I've got my little V. Another important thing to note is I've got a little kink here in the left wrist. So that's my left hand placement, folding it round again and securing it. Now what I have to do is introduce my right hand. And this is going to come side on. The lifeline here of my right hand will naturally fold and accept my left thumb. And this grip is very much more in the fingertips, okay? So you're not trying to hold it like a hammer. It's not as physical as that. There's an argument in golf that the left hand is the holder or the top hand is the holder and the bottom hand is the feeler. This senses where the club face is. It's pinched in here. There's a lot of confusion in golf is which is the best grip for you. Should you interlock? Should you overlap? Should you use the baseball grip? Well really, it's important that we unitize the hands and get them working together. The baseball grip where you put all ten fingers on is quite popular for beginners and certainly juniors and ladies and that isn't a bad way to start golf. Then you have the overlapping grip where the little finger just simply overlaps on the index finger or in the groove. And then finally we have the interlocking grip where we interweave the index finger and the little finger. The interlocking grip, made popular by Jack Nicklaus, 
and Tiger Woods, there's a little bit of a myth that it's good for people with small hands. The big problem with the interlocking grip is that many amateur golfers what I do what I call overlock. They get preoccupied with forcing the fingers deep into each other. And unfortunately, when you do that, that's going to pull your hands out of position. So those alignments of the hands, the two Vs and the knuckles, will end up being wrong. So if you're going to interlock, it's imperative that you form your left hand grip correctly, then place your bottom hand on, and then fold what's left of your fingers. Don't get preoccupied with jamming it right underneath. The most popular grip in golf, without a shadow of a doubt, amongst the world's best players is the overlapping grip, or the Varden grip as it's known, named after Harry Varden, the old opium champion from the turn of the century. And the reason why this is better is it gives the grip a little bit more freedom, again allowing us that flexibility. And I mentioned before the baseball grip, this is good for juniors and ladies, if you're starting off it just gives you a little bit more strength. The great thing about the Grip Par Glove is that this product allows you to form any one of those grips. So it doesn't restrict you to the type of grip that you have to play with. You can learn and form the correct grip for a beginner or a novice or a club player and this product allows you to do that comfortably. Now I want to talk in more detail about who this glove can help. Whether you're a junior, a beginner, a lady, a club player trying to improve their swing, if you've got faults in your swing, if you've got hand ailments or a disability, this glove is also RNA approved. So it's multifunctional and I want to go through more detail to show how you can get the best out of this glove. First thing I'm going to recommend to you, whether you're a lady, a junior or a beginner, hold the club up at about 45 degrees here with your top hand. With your glove on, what I'd like you to do is introduce your hand, remember you're placing it diagonally across into the heel pad, folding it round. Once you've positioned your hand to the appropriate angle, remember seeing the V to your right shoulder or a couple of knuckles. You've got everything positioned correctly and you're happy with that. Then fold the strap round and just secure the fingers. The pressure shouldn't be too tight if you're talking about a scale of 1 to 10 you're probably about three or four. Most people make the mistake of really trying to strangle it, but that's going to reduce flexibility. Once you've positioned the left hand, now you need to introduce your bottom hand, your right hand. So once you've formed the correct grip, now we're going to form the address position. From here, what typically happens with beginners, as you're hitting shots, you'll find your hand moves. I'll just show you how easy this glove is to realign. So often in the traditional glove, players will hit shots, the hands will creep round, creep round, and before you know it, they're underneath the shaft here, and all of a sudden you're not getting the leverage or you're not squaring the club face. So what's great about this, you can realign it and then very quickly secure it again. And it, the beauty of it is it keeps your hand in the correct alignments and allows you to hit shots, really acquiring the feel of the correct grip. So don't just assume you've mastered the grip. Typically what happens is a beginner or a new golfer thinks, well, I've got that, they start focusing on other elements of the swing, and as they're doing that, they're neglecting the position of the grip. So it's important with this product, what you can do is you can go back and keep retraining, keep realigning your hands. A little bit like stabilizers on a bike, it helps you to ride initially. Well, this helps you to form the correct grip but it is also important that you revisit it in your practice sessions occasionally just so it consolidates that correct grip. If your shots are going offline for any golfer it's normally because the club face isn't being presented correctly and the first thing you should do is check the club face and then check your grip because remember what you do at this end controls that end and that end controls what the ball does. So check the grip first, if you're happy with that then investigate the other areas of your golf swing.